I'm Cassie Hi. from Cassie. Cinefy. This is my colleague Dempsey, Hi, nice my you. little glorified cameraman for the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so good to talk to you. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, it's so hot in here. Yeah. I know. Uh, we've been talking about it. So Dempsey and I both uh, both have seen this movie. We both loved it. Like, what? I'm so happy to hear that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The hardest part is over. We love the movie, yeah, right? That's all that matters. What an incredible just group of people you have assembled to talk. They're such funny people um, yes. talking about something that, you know, is, isn't so funny. Yeah. It's just, it's something really unique. Can you yeah. speak about that? Oh, that was the best part of it is that finding people that have gone through a lot and, and use that to make material to make people laugh. I think that's very important. Uh, I'm also thrilled that they talked about things that they hadn't made material out of. Like we learned a lot about these people that we didn't know. You know, there's a lot of things we discuss. There's even discovery in this story. So that was the, the best thing is that they were all very honest and open and also brought new I, new stories to the table. Did, did it turn out the way that you thought it was going to or did you kind of go in yeah. very, very open-minded about it? It was a very fast shoot. I'm thrilled we pulled it off. <laughs> I, it, I was very, uh, nervous about having three days to put 90 minutes together um, and we did it so yeah and it was a, they also suffered through constant filming I mean they were, weren't there very long but we filmed everything and everyone was game to do that they were everyone was cool no one complained yeah cool, cool. so if there's like one thing you want an audience member to take away from this viewing experience what do you hope they get from it I think that that the that we're all going through it. I hope someone that is feeling it and not doing well watches this and sees another human being experiencing that and surviving and making jokes about it. And as painful as it is in the moment to hear those stories, you can realize, oh, they've they've suffered as well. And here they are on a TV show or a movie. So yeah, I hope that's, that's a great takeaway. Dempsey, anything else you want to add? <laughs> Were you nervous to kind of capture all that rawness in front of an emo a, an alive studio audience, essentially? Uh, yeah, you know, we gave them the opportunity to be funny, which I think was important for comics, which is why the audience was important, um, giving them that chance to be entertainers. But we also moved them to the side and talked in the green room and talked one-on-one -on -one with me. So they had a chance to run the gamut of emotions. So it was like, okay, here's a safe space to be funny and perform. But here's a safe space to be real and honest. So we kind of gave them every opportunity. Um, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? Um, you know, we're hot, but we're doing good. <laughs> so uh, talk about how does it feel to, to be here tonight, to celebrating this, this film? Well, my, my partner Luke and I started this around two and a half years ago, right when we started at Heartbeat. We were offered the chance to make a, a comedy film around mental health. And we were like, we've got to make it about stand-up comedians. They're the superheroes of mental health. And I can't believe this incredible cast that we pulled together. Uh, an incredible director, Neil Berkeley, who's a master. And so, you know, we've been watching this ourselves for two years, getting it into shape and getting it ready for a night like tonight. So most excited about having other people watch it and seeing how they react, but we're thrilled. It's funny because when you say a comedy film about mental health, it yeah. almost sounds like an oxymoron, like it shouldn't work. Well, you know, what's interesting is that, you know, I think Luke and I both come from like comedy backgrounds, but we, we were lucky to work with really great comedians and they turn the worst things into the funniest moments. And they have a real superpower. And it's not only that they're healing themselves as they kind of joke about these traumatic moments in their lives, but we laugh and go, I think I kind of relate. And so I think that's where the intersection happened. And like the way that Neil directed this and kind of put it all together, it's hopefully it's laugh, cry, laugh, cry, laugh, cry. And, you know, uh, it's yeah, it gives me chills to think about, you know, I, every time I watch it, I get emotional. Yeah. And I'm really, just, again, excited to see other people watch it tonight. Yeah. Well, we both loved it. Yes. Oh, that's so great. So, yeah. No, congratulations. I mean, we can tell you put a lot of heart into it. And we did. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> it was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Okay. Hey. Hi. Hi. Lovely to meet you. I'm Luke. Yeah. Luke, Cassie. Nice to meet hey. you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My nice colleague. To meet you. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll kind of just ask you the same stuff that I asked him. Yeah, I'll try to answer it as well. Let's see how it goes. Well, I got a question. I got a question. Oh, go for it. How did you, was this film commissioned or like, how did the idea come about? Because it's a great premise. 
it's a it's a wonderful idea. Um, sorry, no, I'm good. holding. You're holding. Who's holding? I'll hold it. Uh, uh, it, it it's a wonderful idea, and, and we had we had partners um, at AXA who did commission the film and, and came to us and said we want to do something in the mental health space, and we said well this is a passion project of ours for years, and now we may finally be able to bring it to life, and so happy to be standing here with it brought to life in the most meaningful way. Maybe not, maybe not a question, but a suggestion. Did you think about turning this into some sort of franchise or TV show with multiple comedians down the road? I love the idea of a franchise. <laughs> I would be lying to you if I said we hadn't discussed it. We'll see if people like it. You know, and Would then we'll you go hire from Dempsey there. Since it was his idea. I think Dempsey <laughs> has to get created by credit on this, and he'll use this against me. It only yeah. seems right. Yeah, we have this on film. Just you that, know. That's right. Dempsey, wonderful idea. Wonderful <laughs> idea. Yeah. Honestly, I, I love what you guys did with it. Like you said, we both enjoyed yeah. it. Um, I can't wait to see what other people, how other people respond to it. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's me too. But I know that I have two fans. Right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Very much. I told my name is Cassie. Hi. This is my colleague Dempsey. Hi. And I said, I remember Gary from Last Comic Standing. And that oh, yeah. feels like it was so kid. I was in college. Twenty years ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Older than I look. Anyway. And I, I <laughs> Had grew to up tell in my Haven too, by the way. So, oh, are you from the same spot? Well, well no, I uh, I grew up in my Haven, but I was born and raised in the Bronx in general. So when he said that in the movie, I was like, I get that reference. So yeah, I just wanted to tell you that I'm old, I guess, because I remember. We all love the movie. We did love the movie. Okay. Yeah. No. Um. I know Dempsey in particular was really moved by your story. So yes. why don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, the one thing that I wanted to know about uh, your involvement in the film, it seemed like you had already been very open with your mental health journey. Did you volunteer for this, or were you chosen? Did you just, was it a beautiful? Uh, Happening or I don't know. Beautiful accident. You know, I was I was asked to do it. I I think because I I I had been so open about it over the years that there there's probably a dozen comedians of about my experience and talent who have opened up about this, and I so I was very grateful to be chosen as as one of the people, and I and I and I felt like I I brought a, a unique perspective to it, so I was very grateful. Yeah. Are these conversations that you have with like other comedian friends like is is this something that you struggle with privately and it's just all kind of starting to get talked about now? That's a great question. I do remember that as soon as I started doing comedy, I would hear comedians who you've never heard of just being very open about being on Prozac or or taking uh, anti-anxiety or having panic attacks or having been hospitalized and and I I found it so refreshing. I always thought it was very daring and very brave because it could make the audience very uncomfortable but as a, as a society at least in America we've become so open about it that it's actually becoming kind of a either maybe not a genre of comedy but a lot of comedians will discuss openly at some point in their in their show about it and then there are a handful who've made entire shows about it and and I was I was happy to be one of those people yeah so you, you talk in this movie about um, electro, you said it's not called electroshock therapy anymore, it's yeah. called something else. What's Electroconvulsive therapy, yeah. yes, which is a lateral move at best. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about that, just because I'm very curious, like what goes into that? It's very effective, and what they do is they, they knock you out completely. You don't feel any of it, you don't remember any of it, and they apply a certain amount of electricity to either one half of your brain or both halves of your brain and it stimulates or affects a, a seizure and hundred years ago or more they discovered that these seizures that epileptics would have had a would, would result in a change in their mood so they thought let's try it with this but they do it at a much lower dosage than we're seeing in, in horror movies or in, in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So it's actually for treatment resistant depression. So for people who haven't taken a lot of, who haven't found medication or other treatments to be helpful, electroconvulsive therapy is, is very effective. It's considered the gold standard and it is, it's covered by insurance, which is usually an indicator that it's, that it's mainstream. Yeah. So you get it, you get it done once and, it's, and you're no. going, you keep doing it. No, okay. I, 
I will say that I felt a huge difference, like it, it relieved my anxiety in, in two treatments, and over about 10 or 12 treatments, I, I, st I was more myself than I had been in years. Yeah. That's fascinating to yeah, me. It's, it's really effective. It's, it's good to know that it's out there. I, I yeah. say in the, in the movie, there's, there's never been a better time to be mentally ill, just because there's so many treatment varieties and options. So, yeah. yeah. It's really fascinating. I've really never heard anyone talk about that before, I've, honestly. I've, oh, I'm really glad that, that I, I was able to get some, some uh, yeah. knowledge out there. No, that's yeah. really interesting. Well, yeah. it was so nice talking to you. Thanks for, thanks for visiting. Congratulations on the film. Yeah. Take it. Hi. What is up? <laughs> Great. You look phenomenal, by the way. I love your outfit. Um, my name is Cassie. My name is Dempsey. <laughs> I want to ask. I want to ask you the million-dollar question. Okay, have you gone a therapist since the movie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually started seeing a therapist last week for the first time in ten years. Congratulations! This, thank you so much. And uh, honestly, she was like the only one available <laughs> if, uh, because apparently all the therapists in LA have been snatched up. You know, they're busy uh, because, you know, they're busy fixing my friends and yeah. neighbors and colleagues. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was like, you know, I'm, I always arrive at things late, you know, because I, I, I procrastinate. I'm stubborn. But most importantly, I'm, I'm lazy. And so, you know, it, it took me a long time. Finally, I was ready to see a therapist only for all my friends, everyone in L.A. to have been seeking their higher selves this whole time. Right? They've been deep into therapy. And so, of course, no one's taking new clients. So I'm not sure if this girl is the one for me, but it is baby steps. You started your journey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm looking for one that might take people on Zoom. Cause That's a thing. Maybe I, I just on Zoom. I have a Zoom therapist. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I don't have to have someone in L.A. since y'all yeah. are all busy. Um, how much your mom doing? My mom is, you know, she's she's hanging in there. She's spiraling. My grandma's in the hospital right now, and so my mom is sort of like needing a lot of calm and care. And so I'm getting sort of like a, yeah, a lot of phone calls from her and a lot of, you know, I'm having to be this calming presence in her life, uh, which I'm not. I'm not a calm chill person you know what I mean like uh, uh, so meaning all I can do is make people laugh and she doesn't know what I'm saying in, in English I only know how to make jokes in English so it's been kind of a struggle but you know that's that's a part of learning you know yeah, yeah. so if someone is watching this movie and they're kind of like you they're like I've never really wanted to get therapy like what are you hoping people get from the documentary my biggest hope is that people just see comedians as whole people, you know, because we're, we're clowns and we are performers and our job is to make people laugh and we, we write and write and polish our jokes for the audiences. Um, but, you know, what people don't see is how, how deep we are, how much depth there is to even making a dumb observational joke about cereal or something. You have to be a good listener, you have to be a good observer. You have to be a lover of humanity, and so that's mostly what I want people to take away from this film. Yeah. Very well said. Congratulations on your hunting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, first of all, how did you get involved with this? You are, I think, the only British person in the cast. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always a token Brit. Um, in Britain, I was always a token black, and then I come to America, and I'm always a token Brit. So yeah, I'm, I live here. I live in America now. I've been doing stand up here for four years, and so I'm honestly a big part of American comedy history. So you know, I'm so glad they did ask me to be a part of this because yeah, I am a legend. So I deserve to be here. And so humble too. So humble. I'm like <laughs> the most humble person I know. <laughs> in all seriousness, like being a part of this movie and seeing it premiere at Tribeca must be pretty amazing. Um, it's my first Tribeca, number one, my first film festival, my first world premiere, and my mum's here, losing her mind. 
So uh, it's a big deal for me and the Huge family. She's in a polka dot dress back there somewhere. She was filming a lot of this. Oh my um, gosh. She's too cute. But yeah, it's a big deal. And also for me to be able to like be from the UK. I'm from a small town in the UK. I've come a long way and stuff like this reminds me of that. So, Where in the UK? So I'm from a town, a town called Croydon, which is in South London. And it, you, it's not famous for anything. Awesome, um, especially considering the subject matter of this movie. Yeah, honestly, yeah, and I talk about it in the movie. I talk about how hard it is for women in comedy in the UK and women of color, and all the things I had to overcome to get here, and the reason why I moved here, and bullying, and uh, just feeling not good enough, and being repeatedly told you're not good enough, but it's not because you're not funny, it's because of the color of your skin, or the fact that you have a vagina. That's what it was like for 10 years in the UK. And so I'm honored that one, I get to tell my story, and two, that my story is being told because more people need to understand that, like, we don't do this for fun. Like, comedians, we really feel it. We have hearts, we really care, and we're, every single comic is going through some stuff, but we all manage to go on stage and make people laugh. So if we can talk about our issues and use, use laughter as therapy to get over it, hopefully it will inspire some people at home or in the movie theater watching it to do the same. So have you seen the you've seen the movie? You've I've seen, seen the... my parts of the movie. Okay. I fast forwarded it to me. <laughs> I've only seen my bits, but I was there. No, I appreciate that's true. That's true. Wow. I know what, happened. know what happened. I know how it ends. <laughs> All right, I mean, anything else you want to ask, London? No, I, I, I'm, congratulations on the film, and I cannot wait to see what else you do after yeah. this. Yeah, you're so awesome. Thank I'm really you. glad that I discovered you here. Thank you so much. <laughs> you to meet you. Yeah, you too. Take care. You, you too. Yeah. That's not us, don't Yeah, worry. no, that's us. You're good. <laughs> Take care.